let, let's just figure out if we can uh, determine why God might care if you masturbate, right? So let's suppose that we have a story, a heuristic of some kind that stands in for something. And the story is God is watching. He sees you always. He doesn't want you masturbating, so don't you dare. What happens? What happens? Yeah. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's a rather ineffectual you sure? idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't think that story prevented I, I th- I lots think, of people from masturbating? Well, well, no, but I think the reality was was that you had people masturbating and feeling terrible about it, and you had a whole layer of sexual neurosis that got grafted on to human psychology unnecessarily. Okay, I mean, so, Christianity has a certain typology so, of sexual hang-uppery, which, which <laughs> you know, the, the tantrics don't have. So if I understand you correctly, you are agreeing that a certain amount... A certain number of people will yeah. have masturbated. Some, have some of them bad, joined the priesthood and it. raped little boys. I mean, that's all no, no, of a piece. Let's not go there. Yeah. Let's stick with the, the topic. So a certain number of people will have masturbated. It, it, they will have thought... It, it, honestly, it's the same topic. I mean, that, that, those, the, the, the taboos around masturbation, the taboos around uh, sexuality prior to marriage, the taboo around divorce, all of the t- taboo around out-of-wedlock birth... The, the ideal of celibacy in the priesthood, all of that is, a, is a, a, just a diabolical machine of needless sexual conflict and misery. No, hold, hold on, hold that, on, hold on. And, but, yes, okay. You have so, to take I, diabolical how's the, out of there. How's the, how's the whole flood of pornography thing working out for okay. you? Gra- I, will, I will grant you that there is some interpretation that takes supernatural principles and magic and otherworldliness out of the equation here that gets you some wisdom in the heuristic. Yes, if you're masturbating all the time, you're not satisfying your, your monogamous relationship with your wife or husband. We, we right? don't even need to go there. Let's just... You're not procreating and we let's want Let's just children. agree that a certain amount of masturbation was, present, was prevented by that story which made people fear the consequence of them engaging in it, which would okay. result in... I'm pretty sure. Less. Less masturbation, which means that in seeking a release, which we are physiologically programmed to seek, one might end up looking in a more urgent fashion for a mate. Right. So it's... it's, uh, Are we going to enforce monogamy? No. So, look, I'm I'm trying to take you somewhere. I think think there is a way that we can rescue some important part of what both of you are saying that can now be reconciled, and then there's a bitter pill for each of you. Mm. I mean, that's just the way this looks to me. So, if we can agree that this makes sense, actually, as a fitness-enhancing adaptation, that this story would result in people behaving in a way that might result in them marrying early, might result in them reproducing earlier than they would otherwise, right? Then we can understand it as mechanistic, and we can understand what you said, that, you know, maybe God would care about whether or not people masturbate because God is a metaphor for some set of stories that gets you to behave in an adaptive fashion. But the point for you then would be that Sam is arguing with reason we can decide whether or not to employ this story at this moment, whether it's a good idea for us to urgently reproduce as quickly as possible, which, for example, increases the size of the population of the planet, whereas delaying reproduction keeps the rate of population growth down and might be a better choice for a moment in history when we have 7.5 billion people on the planet. So, in some sense, what I think I see is the religious story itself makes some kind of sense if you adhere to it in a manner that you are obligated and have no tools with which to question it, then you will miss the fact that at this moment you might want to throw that story but out. The, the problem is it doesn't make sense, and this is, this is a problem with these heuristics in general, it doesn't make sense for the right reason, and that's why it's not a, a reliable guide given other changes in the world. But with everything changing, you want to be making sense for the right reason. You don't want it like so. Useful fictions have to be retired at a certain point. Useful truths stay true. I mean, if you're, because they're based on your engagement with reality. And so, to take your point about pornography, which I think is totally valid, you we, you could have a completely rational conversation in terms of human psychology and sociology and what you want society to look like about the corrosive nature of pornography. Right? That's not. You don't have to be a Victorian. Uh, prude to worry that there might be something wrong with 
the infinite availability of pornography to 13 year olds and above, right? I mean, this, that's, I don't know what, what generation of human beings we're raising in the current environment. It's, it's, you know, it's qu quite worrisome actually. But again, you don't have to invoke mythology to do that, and I would say the temptation to invoke mythology to say, "Well, you actually, you know." So how do you do it? Poseidon really gets pissed off when you masturbate. How do you? How do you do it? How do you do it? You, you, you talk, like talk we don't about, have you a mechanism. The effects, for, we have no the, mechanism for controlling. Talk about that the effects the on human relationships and your own mind and your own intention and the way you view other people. Sam, and that barely of works for sex ed. It barely works for condom education. Well, what was it that? Barely works. Like those sorts of educational interventions to stop that kind of fundamental behavior have very little effect. Well, People aren't nearly as, as amenable to behavioral changes as a consequence of rational educational interventions as you might hope.